morning, good afternoon, good evening, good mid-morning, good mid-afternoon, whatever time of day you're watching, good midnight, whatever time of day you're watching the Good Wine Zone, thank you for doing so. Please go ahead and click the subscribe button and the little bell for notifications. All right, I'll pause while you do it. Not really. Now, what we're doing today, first of all, Hat of the Day Alabama Backroads Series. This is a series of bicycle rides sponsored by this organization. And if you do all of the rides in a fall season, you get a medal. Well, I don't know, Smoking Hot and I did a couple of centuries, uh, but not, I'm not gonna do enough to get a medal. Shirt of the Day, Samaritan's Purse shirt. Wonderful organization. If you have a chance to volunteer with them, it's incredible how organized they are and how well financed they are too. But you will show up. They have vetted the people that you're going to help uh, and it's all just awesome and a way to spread God's love. Let's talk about the oak leaf hydrangea. Two kinds of hydrangeas in the world, probably more than two, but the two biggest kind are what we call the native hydrangea and hydrangea paniculata which is your limelight and uh, those type of hydrangeas my favorite is the old oak leaf hydrangea okay this particular cultivar is called harmony it was found at the harmony baptist church in harmony alabama by our old friend eddie aldridge Eddie, you may have heard of the snowflake hydrangea. Snowflake, can you see the panicle here? <laughs> the snowflake has a very long, slender panicle. The harmony, this is kind of on the smallest side. The harmony, these will get up like footballs. And they're thick, and it is my favorite hydrangea. It is gorgeous. Now, this particular plant, you can see it's in a pot, and it's what one of my, I call it mother plants, where I take cuttings from this. And guess who else is taking cuttings from this? Even though it's right here at the end of our driveway, that's right, our old friend, the Alabama whitetail, whom we love to coexist with, but they love hydrangeas. I have planted probably 30 of these uh, in the front area, in the little mountaintop area, which <laughs> is very difficult to plant and to walk not so much for the Alabama whitetail. They stripped every one of them bare. Um, this is, I mean, it, you can see, this is where they chew the new leaves. They love the new leaves. They broke that stem off. Uh, I mean, just look at their chew marks, you know? So, and then once they, once they do that, you're not gonna have anything from that stem again. Uh, All right, so, now where are we going to take the cutting from on the plant you want to take it from the new wood from this year if you'll notice this is brown so the brown wood is not new wood the softer wood is the new wood so come zoom in here real quick if you could and what you want to do is go right below what we call a leaf node n-o-d-e and i'm not sure you can can you see that okay so come in right below this leaf node and you're going to cut it at an angle. And the reason you're going to cut it at an angle is when the water comes in from the rain, you want that to roll off. So now, why do you not cut it down here? I'm not sure. You, I'm actually trying some that I've cut from right above the leaf node. But if you cut it at the leaf node, just below the leaf node, and then you're going to snip off the little stems that are right there. And that's what you're gonna have. Now this one, it wasn't a real pretty straight cut. It was a little tattered, but that's okay. And you're actually going to take your pruners or scissors, which we'll do a little bit later, and you actually scuff that up just a little bit. Okay, let's get one more. Let's, uh, let's get one right here. So we are, can you see where we are? We're right below the leaf node we're going to cut it at an angle that was a better cut and let's get rid of these little leaves and and uh what do you call the petioles get rid of the little petioles 
that are by that leaf node and uh, then we'll we'll show you downstairs where we we'll show you at the uh, what do we call that over there potting shack what we're going to do with these but here's two good cuttings we're going to drop them in our bucket of clean water so let's go ahead and grab a few more of these can you are you zooming in here you see mm -hmm. what we're doing so we're going to go right above this little node and we're going to uh, we're going to leave those all of those leaves I'll explain all that in a minute. Let's come down here. Here's a good spot. Let's get another one. Uh, let's see here. Here's another one. Let's get this one. Uh, let's go on down. We're going to try something a little different on that one. Okay, and I don't, I'm not going to take some from these because the leaves had to feed it, have to feed it. So, we only got like four cuttings this year from one of my big mother plants. Thank you, Alabama Whitetail. And you know, I, I think I gave Eddie Aldridge credit for discovering the Harmony cultivar of the hydrangea. I think he kind of made it famous. I know he propagated and sold them out of his nursery in Bessemer. I'm not sure he discovered it though. We may look that up and post it down in the comments for you. All right, here we are at the potting shed. First of all, let me tell you, <clears throat> this is the end product of what we're doing. This, these little guys, we, the, uh, these were cuttings that I took not last summer, but the summer before that, summer, spring. And uh, they were tiny little cuttings, of course, like, like you're gonna see what they look like. But then last year, and you're gonna see how we pot them up, but then I take them the next year to give them more room to grow and to make it a more established and hardy plant to transplant into the ground, I'll put three cuttings into this container. They call this a three gallon container. It's not three full gallons, it's three nursery gallons. Um, and, and that's a pretty good size for this three stemmed plant. So then this over here, this guy, he, uh, although he was not planted as a multi-stem plant, he's probably three years old. All right, so he was taken from a cutting, maybe maybe four years old even. But that's what they're gonna look like. And by this time, you know, this plant has a, let's see. Yeah, look at those roots. He's got plenty of roots and he's ready to go in the ground somewhere. Uh, yeah, so, so that's it. Now these guys, oh, here we go. Oops, great. Did you get that in the video? I hope so. So that's one thing to try not to do is knock your plants over while you're doing this and break the stem off of all of the leaves. Super, just super. Well, anyway, uh, here's what I was trying to show you. Based on what we showed you upstairs, what do we have here? We have here the Alabama whitetail damage. And this is right by our fence, by the pool that deer don't care. They love this stuff, it's candy. Okay, so here, let's get started. What you need is, first of all, now some people will tell you they only want to use brand new pots and they're probably right but I'm too cheap for that okay so I'm using recycled pots so you got your pots ready you want a little bit of uh, this is brand is Osmocote it can be nurse it could be anything but it's just uh, I think it's an 18612 mix with slow release you want a little bit of fertilizer in these containers. You want some rooting powder. Okay, this is essential. Rooting powder. This is Fertilone brand. You can use any brand. Rooting powder is indole 3-butyric acid, if that's how you say it. Then you're going to want your actual, what do you call it, substrate, the, the soil. Stay right there the soil that you're going to fill these pots up with. 
So what we've got here, normally when I'm doing a bunch of these, I will mix it up in a wheelbarrow. I've mixed this up for you today right here. So what is this? I'm glad you asked. It is peat moss. I'm not going to show you the bag of peat moss, but you know what peat moss is. Just buy peat moss. It comes in a bale and it's peat. It's dug up from the ground. You want clean peat moss. Okay, so do get your new new container of peat moss. Then you want something like perlite. What is perlite? I'm glad you asked. I don't know what perlite is. I, I think it's a natural product. But it feels like styrofoam. Let me see, come in here and see this. Whenever you buy a plant at the store, little flowers, you'll see all this squishy stuff. Feels like styrofoam, but I think it's actually a natural product. What does it do? I'm glad you asked. It aerates the soil and keeps it loose. <coughs> you do not want to breathe the perlite dust. Um, you do not want to breathe the peat dust. If I was a smart man, I would have a mask on and I would tell you to do the same when you deal with peat moss. Peat moss has fibers that get in the air. If you breathe them, they will get in your lungs. We had a neighbor who died because he was a big hydrangea guy and he had a yard full of them and he was out there working all the time. He breathed in the peat moss dust and we believe that caused his death. The other thing that I like to have you don't really have to, but this is just called soil conditioner. Soil conditioner is nothing more than ground up pine bark. And the reason I like soil conditioner, again, it's natural. Again, it keeps the soil kind of loose, but it also breaks down into a fertilizer. It just biologically breaks down like leaf mold and it serves as a slow release fertilizer. Her light so does not so come back in here and you can look so we've mixed all this up and you say Alan what is the ratio of peat moss to perlite to soil conditioner and I would say that's a good question okay I like it about like this it's maybe a little heavy on the peat moss but I want those roots to have the ability to get in there and I don't want them having the trouble pushing through stiff tough soil uh, there there are probably gardeners or university programs that will tell you the exact percentages do I look like an exact percentage guy I want it where it kind of feels good to me so now what we're gonna do we're gonna take these we're going to fill them up you saw me take the cuttings from the plant you know what I could um, I could possibly let's take let's take some more here let's take some off of the big boy over there so let's fill this up let's make a tray what do you think smoking hot you want to make a tray sure make a tray make a tray all right this is the real exciting part to watch there we go. So we now have a trade. Now, let's take some more cuttings. We've got uh, our little bucket of cuttings. There it is. The old Falco number two, you want to sterilize these before you take your cuttings. I should have mentioned that. All right, so we're coming right back over here, cutting it right above that little, those two nodes. And why do I put it in here? Just to keep it moist and happy while we are... Uh, while we're collecting the other cuttings. No reason other than that. Okay. Let's see here. You want to do one more? Yeah, let's do one right at the top here. By the way, I'm going to come back and do some cutting on these to cause these to branch out. You don't want just straight up sticks, but you want to have them healthy. So, now we got all our cuttings, right? So the first thing we're going to do is let's lay these let's lay these guys out here i want to make sure we got wet ones all right so everything's wet let's get these wet now 
We're gonna I was get wondering a... where that picture was. Really? I must have borrowed it some time ago and put it in the potting shed. So, now you can do this next part with your old Velcro number twos, but I like to do it with scissors because they just cut a little bit cleaner. So, here's what we've got, right? Here's our cutting. Can we just stick this in here? Yes. But this plant is not pulling up enough nutrients to keep all of these leaves alive. However, if you stripped all of the leaves off, the plant would not produce enough chlorophyll to sustain the plant. Chlorophyll and whatever else, bringing in moisture, all the other things that leaves help to do. You know, a plant will bring up moisture through the rootstock, but it will also help the plant from transpiring by having moisture on the leaves. So, so we need a little bit of leaves, but not a whole bunch of leaves. So we're gonna fold this leaf in half, and we're just gonna cut it like this. Now, you know, there may be people out there watching that say, good one, uh, that's not how you do it. And that's fine. Tell that to these guys. That's exactly how I did these guys. Exactly how I did the 50 more that are over there. Right. Once we do this, we put them in the mist bed where we have a little overhead mister. We turn it on. So now, mm, you know what? I don't like these. That may be a little too much for that guy. So I'm not cutting in half the tiny leaves. I think they're small enough to sustain. All right, we're going to put it in some water. By the way, it's clean water, and I sterilize these scissors as well. And some people will tell you uh, there's something else that you do. Uh, oh. Aren't those my kitchen scissors? Yes, those are the kitchen scissors. <laughs> They're the best scissors we have. So you put a little bit of rooting powder. I like to put it in this top because you don't want to dip it in there. Why? Because then you contaminate it, right? So I just put it in this top, and you're going to roll it onto about an inch of the stem and then we're just going to stick it right down there in the middle okay so let's do some more we got some big leaves we're going to cut them off cut about two-thirds of it off and again is that the proper percentage i have no idea i really don't know what i'm doing but what's nice is whatever i'm doing seems to work so i'm going to keep doing it um, there's people smarter than me, believe you me. So I think that's good. I think I'm going to cut that one off because I don't want it to have too much of a hard time trying to support the rest of the plant while it what grows. What about the root tin? I mean roots. the root powder. Did I not put any rooting powder on that one? No. Damn it. I'm sure I'm glad you're here to supervise me. That one would not have rooted. It. Do you know it might have rooted? I don't know that the rooting powder is absolutely essential, but from what I read, it gives you a much better chance of getting some roots, having some roots come out of it. All right, so we got this guy. Now you see already how he's wilted? We just cut him off, but he's already wilted. So let's get these big leaves cut down here. They will wilt in a, in a hurry. It's not that hot today. It's probably mid-80s. All right, we want to make sure we have the stem wet. We want to get some rooting powder on here. And you're probably saying, but Alan, once you uh, put that top back on the container, won't it contaminate the rest of it? Well, I'm going to clean it up. Okay. Here's our little guy. Let's cut a little bit off of here. Perfect. It's already wet. Well, we're going to wash out a little dirt on there. And let me also tell you, when I, when I, before I started doing this, I, I didn't have anybody teaching me what to do. I went to the YouTube, and most of the people are propagating the other kind of hydrangeas. I just, you know, it's probably pretty much the same but I did not find a whole lot of help on propagating by cuttings native hydrangeas. So I had to experiment on my own and, and we've been doing it out here for about four years. And so far we've made a pretty good little crop of Harmony hydrangeas, which 
Eddie Aldridge used to grow them. He has passed away. There is another company in Alabama that used to grow them. The owners, one of the owners is sick. And uh, they, you know, they, they, they're just not growing much anymore. Uh, my favorite nursery down here, Myers Plants and Pottery in Pelham, Alabama. Every now, now and then Stuart gets some. And I'll usually go in there and try to buy you know a good bit of them because I just envision this place to have them all through the front and that mount make it look like a mountainous area and they're just gorgeous but I can't keep up with the deer what, what do you do after you put them in there that is a great question great question thank you once again I just every day I, I, I figure out hey that's why I married this wonderful woman so let's put them in here. We got a couple more, and we'll uh, we'll answer that question. Okay. So it, right now, what what's the problem with boy? Look how quickly that one wilted, and I just cut that. Who they will wilt. And so what? So what do you do when something wilts? You, you water have, it. You need some water. So it's very important when after you have these planted or stuck, as some people call it, um, it's important to water it immediately. Now, what you don't want to do is flood it, right? Because you flood it, what do you do? You wash all the root tone, rooting powder, off of the stem. You jostle things around. It's not a good situation. That's why a mist bed is the best way. You're just lightly putting water on these, you're misting these leaves so they don't transpire. And you're, you're soaking the, the soil. I, I, did I put it? Tad gummit. Glad you're here. You're soaking the soil. And what, what does that do? Help me out here, Dina. Tell the people, what does it do by filling up this soil? Removes the air pockets. You are just brilliant. There's a lot of air in there right now that you don't want. Okay, it, it will get enough air, but you don't want air. You don't want air pockets because why? The roots are not gonna grow into the air. They're gonna grow into the soil. So you want the soil touching the stem and the roots. I'm so glad you said soil and not dirt. Well, are you? Normally I make you mad, don't I? And I say dirt. I need two more cuttings here. Just. Take a pause. I'm going to go into my little nursery of them and grab a couple more cuttings. I just went over into the nursery where we're growing all the ones we potted up before. And we grabbed two more, two more little tips here of some steps, tips. Ooh, that's some big brand. No, see how that's not wilted. Rooting powder is cheap. You know what I forgot to do? What? I forgot to do something. Let me show you what I forgot to do. Uh, I forgot to scuff up the bottom of the stem. Again, you don't have to do it, but if you will take your scissors, scuff up the bottom of the stem a little bit, it will take in that root tone quicker. I usually scuff up all the bottoms of my stems, so I guess we can do a little comparison this year and watching this one to see, hey, does that make a difference or not? Where's the other one? Didn't I bring two over here? I That's did. You. Here it is. Okay. Okay. Look how healthy these are from the nursery. And it's and here's something else crazy. The deer love the new leaves on small plants. If you have an adult or an older, you know that's not true because the mama plant, our, our mother plant, is older and they're bothering her. Our lady across the street, um, who has a lot of native hydrangeas and they're gorgeous. The deer don't seem to bother hers. Now hers are all, you know, 10 feet tall, eight, 10 feet tall. But the deer, I have not inspected them. Maybe the deer still eat some of the younger foliage. I don't know. 
Maybe that, she put something out she that they don't like. She may put something out. But you know what? So let me tell you what I've done. I had first year I put netting around all these hydrangeas I planted. And every Saturday I played the game with the deer, re put the netting back that the deer have torn down during the week. I got tired of losing that battle that year. Next year, I went to my barber, Sasha, who you'll see on an upcoming video. I said, Sasha, I need some human hair. Sasha saved up a couple of weeks of hair. I went out and put hair all around the hydrangeas. And it worked fabulous for about maybe a month. And then after the month, either the smell was gone or the deer were like <clears throat> trying to scare us with hair. We, we're not fooled by that. And they ate them all again. So I don't know what to do. I'll, the, the nursery is right up against the fence where the dogs are and we make noise and we try to keep them out and they still come in there. But it does slow them down at least as instead of just out, you know, on the property. All right. So what we're going to do, as Dina said, we're going to place this tray now in the mist bed. And we're going to let it mist all the rest of the day because we want that soil to be completely saturated in a very, very slow way. And then we will come out here. Mm. I, see, I don't water them every day because I want them to be tough. And, and if you baby a plant and you just water it a little bit, you know, it's not going to develop these tough roots deep to, to fend for itself on its own. So fend for itself on its own. That's a double entendre. But, uh, <laughs> and that, I'm not even sure if that's the right word, but it sounded good. <laughs> So anyway, I will miss them. I'll try to miss them, you know, about every other day for a while and keep them wet. Of course, when it rains, they, they don't need that. Uh, and the other thing is just watch them. You know, if they look like they're wilted down, hey, turn your mister on. If you don't have a mist bed, just take a hose, put your thumb on it, and kind of make it misty, but you'll have to stand there for a while, right? So a mist bed is good or some type of a sprinkler. Anything else? Um, I don't guess so. Let's come back, what, maybe in about three months? And in about three months, let's come back and let's pull one of these up and you'll see the nice little hairy roots down at the bottom. All right? Hey, thank you for joining us on the Good Wine Zone. We have a, an upcoming Japanese maple update for you, uh, which will discuss a little tragedy. And I don't want to be over dramatic in that. Obviously, plants are not people. You lose plants. It's not a great day, but it's not really a tragedy. But we had a bad winter here, and we had a lot of damage. We're going to show you about that, okay? Hey, thanks. Subscribe. Like. We do live in the woods. That's why we have so many deer. One time, I sat on the front porch in the rocking chairs where you've seen, and I, I finally heard something. I was probably working, and I heard something. I looked out there. And they're crossing the driveway, okay? A herd. I don't know how many I missed, but I started counting at that point, and I counted 22. And two of the last two were little youngsters, very curious. They walked up to about within 10, about 15 feet of me, maybe 20 feet of me, to try to figure out what I was. Uh, so we do live in the woods. We love it. I will never leave this house or these woods. In fact, Sandy, our old golden retriever, is buried right over here in the woods, and I've instructed Dina to bury me right next to Sandy. <laughs> so there you go. Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time.